Yo, what up guys, Old School Dan here, and in this video I want to talk about how Silver Era bodybuilders got so jacked. Alright, so let's dive right into it. Here we go. So they did basic exercises, right? None of that incline cable lateral machine curl, yada yada BS that a lot of kids now think that is best for them. Oh, I gotta do some type of cable curl, or I gotta do lat pull downs. No, no, no. They did a lot of basic exercises. This includes squats, bench, pull ups, behind the neck chins, a lot of pressing, um, just compound movements, you know. But what I found was that was very interesting, and I've been doing a lot of research on this. And I've ever, actually, I've never actually gotten to this part in my um, in my kinesiology classes at all because I haven't gone into a university yet, and that's when you get deep into kinesiology. But I found that EMG, if you don't know what EMG is, I, if I can remember correctly, it's electromyos graph, something like that, right? But what they do is like they measure the amount of muscle stimulation that goes on during an exercise, correct? What I found out was that a lot of the basic exercises like bench press, squats, presses are all very EMG dominant, right? Meaning they stimulate and fatigue most of the muscle fibers in that muscle. So bench press is one of them, squats is the other one, pressing is the other one. And it's funny that I feel like these guys were ahead of their time, they didn't even know it, right? With the lack of, I mean, yes, there was some science back then, but it wasn't like of today. We, they didn't have like, oh, well the squats that has, it's the EMG dominant exercise, it stimulates and fatigues most muscle fibers. No, they just sort of figure it out that, hey, you know what, these are some of the best movements for us, let's keep doing them, right? So I found that to be very interesting. In, in, in example, right, like a lot of kids now think, oh, let me go jump on that, um, uh, what do you call it, the um, hammer strength um, machine press, right? And then you put it up against a bench press, the bench press is more EMG dominant, therefore it will stimulate and fatigue more muscle fibers than that machine, right? And this is why a lot of people, like this is how they got so jacked back then, because a lot of kids nowadays, a lot of people think that, Oh, let's do the machine. Let's do that. Like they're coming out with all these new machines, but what they really need, what you really need to be doing is these basic exercises like the squat, bench, pressing. And I know I made a video about the squat. You may want to check that one out. People are like, oh, well, you said not to do squats. Well, Vince Jana didn't like squats. Dude, I've made, I've talked about this subject like a few times already on my Facebook, made a post about it, made a video on it on my YouTube. So you gotta, definitely got to check those out and keep up with my content. But yeah, they did basic exercises, okay? Um, now let's move on to the next topic, which is they ate lots and lots of whole food. None of this supplement, BCAs, glutamine, creatine, um, protein, um, tyrosine, I mean, cellulose, cellulene, I, I pre-workout stuff, like none of this stuff, right? Like not even a multivitamin. Like this is, they all ate whole foods, meats, ground beef, chicken, fish, um, Dairy, milk, eggs, no, I'm sorry, milk, milk, cheese, um, yogurt, fresh fruit, uh, apples, bananas, peaches, I don't know, you name it, whatever, fruit, vegetables, kale, lettuce, I don't know, like, you guys know the basic vegetables, right? Um, but it was balanced, very full of variety, right? It wasn't a keto diet, they, Leroy Colbert said they ate like the, they, they trained like the devil, and ate as much as they could. And when they wanted to cut, they just trained like the devil and just ate less. And it wasn't like a keto diet. They didn't have keto, like they weren't running keto diets. Like if you look at Steve Reeves' diet, his diet was full of like carbohydrates, high in carbohydrates, right? So it wasn't like this keto diet. A lot of people saying, hey, what do you think of Vince Trana's keto diet? I honestly, here's my opinion on keto diet. I think it's a very good fat loss tool, but I don't think it's sustainable for the rest of your life because if you think about it, and I actually wrote this in my e my free ebook, which you which you should check out, which is called Fuck Bro Dieting. That that keto dieting. Imagine eating bacon, cheese, eggs, um, pork rinds, all the stuff for the rest of your life. How does that make you feel? Just eating foods that are high in fat and protein. How does that make you feel? It does. You don't like the sound like that. You don't like the sound of that, right? It's it's crazy because it, it's like. You're growing up, right? You, you're born into eating carbs and fats and proteins, and all of a sudden, one day, you, you decide for the rest of your life, hey, I'm going to do keto for the rest of my life. This is how I'm going to keep my weight off. Go ahead and go ahead and try that, man. That's not going to work out for you. It's tough to maintain that type of lifestyle because you weren't born into it. You're conditioned 
into a cart full of a diet full of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, right? You weren't just born into straight keto. That's why it's so hard to maintain that thing. You just because you're not used to it, and it's gonna be hard to actually live a life like that. So that that's my opinion on it. To be honest, good look, good fat loss tool for a few months, maybe a year or so, but I mean not very sustainable. Because a lot of people, I've had a lot of clients come to me and say, "Hey, I was on keto, and then I I plug them in with my um." nutrition programming and they are coming better than they they did before so um a lot of people come into this uh this this idea of like hey how do they do so much volume you see guys like reg park steve reeves um a lot of these guys did a lot of volume they're like how do they how do they recover recover from it and recover from it and actually go through those workouts and not overtrain but here's the thing overtraining is a thing it's just that you're it, it's it's you know, it's uh, overtraining is a thing but it, it goes very far like it, you have to come very far to get there, and on top of that, if your nutrition is on point, you can't really overtrain because yes, you can. Um, what's the word? I'm trying to put it into words. Like, if you have a shitty diet, your recovery is gonna freaking suck, and that's why you can't do a lot of volume. But if you have a good diet, like a really really good diet, you need a lot of calories. That's gonna aid your recovery, and that's what's gonna push you through these these like 30 to 50 sets work full body workouts, just like these guys. Cause they ate a lot of food. These guys were big. All right, we're talking about guys like who had a. I can't remember. Uh, I can't remember Clarence Ross. I saw a video about him, but he had a 50 inch chest or something like that. Right, the big chest, if I can remember correctly, or something like that. And I was like, damn, that's a big dude. These guys were big dudes. And when you think about it, how do you get big? Lots of food, lots of calories. I'm guessing anywhere between 45k calories. To be honest, that's what I'm. I'm, so I'm picturing what they ate to get that big, that jack. But a lot of food helped with their recovery, right? A lot of people think they can out-train a bad diet. No, hell no. Like, here, here's what's stupid. Like, they think, oh yeah, let me get in 3,000 calories. I'm like, yeah, go ahead and get in 3,000 calories, but how much of that is actually protein, carbs, and fats? And then, they, and then you break it down, they're like eating like 200 grams of fat and like three, 400 um, grams of carbohydrates and probably like, but 100 grams of protein, and they're wondering why they're wondering why they're not growing. They're just like, why aren't I growing? What the heck? I'm eating so much food. Well, because you're gonna like a shit. You're not eating any protein. That's not enough protein to get your to get your body to actually grow from. Like that's that doesn't make any sense. These guys ate high in protein. That's how they were able to recover and build their muscles faster. So that's that's one of the ways they got really jacked by just eating lots of whole foods. None of this supplement stuff that they they barely had subs back then. Most of friends barely either. All right, it's just a lot of whole foods. If you have a, like my dietitian created me a diet where it was full of whole foods, whole foods, just like an silver air bodybuilding diet. Um, it had dairy, meat, grains. Um, I forgot to include that. Grains, fruit, vegetables. And I was like, hey, what do you think about me taking a multi multivitamin? And she was like, you know what? You won't really need it just because your diet is so well rounded with all these foods. It like you should be getting all your vitamins and minerals from these from these foods, and I was like, cool. It's like the only thing, other thing I recommend is probably some creatine, just because you want to put on some extra mass. But you, it, it, even then, your body gets creatine from like red meat. And it's funny because Reg Park was actually one of the ones that said, "Hey, don't take supplements unless a dietitian recommends it." It's like that's all I recommend for someone. Like all these people, just like just eat whole foods. You just need old whole foods. You don't need these supplements unless a dietitian recommends them. So, with that being said, let's move on to the next topic. So lots of sleep. Now, this is something I did uh, quite a bit of research on as well. A lot of these guys did put, it, put a big emphasis on sleep, like around 8 to 10 hours. Like Steve Reeves slept 8 to 10 hours. I'm sure Reg Park slept 8 to 10 hours. And honestly, like Leroy Colbert couldn't have said it any better. You make the most gains while you're resting, while you're kicking back, taking, taking it easy, sleeping. And actually, in one of Daryl Conant's book, he talks about how – it's called invincible, right? He talks about the growth hormone that it's released when you're um, sleeping. Yeah, the growth hormone is being released while you're sleeping, and that's when that's when you're making the most gains. And a lot of people try, like a lot of people try to neglect this. They're just like, hey, you know what? Let me just train really hard. And and it's funny because they miss out a lot of factors. They're just like they're training really hard and they're wondering why well, they're not gaining. I'm like, well, first of all, fix your diet. Make sure your your diet's in check. It's very balanced. Make sure you get enough protein. And I'm telling them, make sure your sleep isn't shit. All right, these guys slept a lot. They take they 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 live the lifestyle that was in in towards bodybuilding. All right, they take it they took it very seriously. Like they took the sleep seriously. They took the, the training seriously. They took the sleep. I'm sorry, not the sleep. The diet seriously, and that's how they were to make make gains, like really good gains. A lot of people, a lot of you guys, don't take it seriously enough. 
that you think you can out train a bad diet. You think you can out train just because you have a good training routine. You you say fuck fuck off to everything else like sleep, um, diet. That's not the way it works. These guys slept a good amount, and that's how they will. That's how they were able to recover from their um, long workouts. On top of that, with the diet, that's how they recovered as well. So, um, let me look back at my notes. Okay. Also, like another little tip thing, just because like I think they were able to get really good sleep back then, just because. They didn't have cell phones. A lot of you guys think are like up at night, um, sleeping, like you're up in the middle of the night and you're like on your phone, you're swiping up. And the blue light is what actually keeps you awake. All right. So that's sort of what ruins your sleep. And I know it's, I know it's not all you guys, but it's some of you guys. Some of the younger guys like to be on Instagram or like Facebook, um, like in the middle of the night, just scrolling and whatnot. And you, your blue light is on and it's keeping you awake. And this is what's sort of keeping you from making the most gains. So yeah, now to cover the last subject which is the had a good they had a good routine right they train full body they train every single body part in that session chest back shoulders legs calves arms forearms all of it in one session all right they had a decent amount of volume in each session i mean you take a look you take a look at steve reeves um workouts take a look at res parks alan stefan clarence ross um, george eiferman it's a good amount of volume in each session but like I said, they were able to recover from that work that workout and put put themselves through that training, just because they had a, they ate a shit ton of food, and they slept a lot, eight to ten hours. That's how they and a good amount of frequency is three times per week. They're hitting everything three times per week. They're hitting the quads three times per week, the calves, the chest, the back, the biceps, the triceps, the shoulders, the traps, all of it. All of it was hit three times per week. Whereas everybody thinks they're like. Bro, they think their bro um, style of training routine is the best. Hell no, dude. With the bro routine, what I don't like about it is that you can't maximize. I mean, you could maximize volume, but recovery is going to be tough. I remember when I was um, getting put through a bro diet. I mean, a bro, a bro uh, split with my old coach Tyler, and I could barely recover between sessions. I would train chest, then back, and then shoulders. And by the time I'd, I'd hit shoulders, I'm still sore from my chest day, and I could barely do shoulders. I'm like, dude. I haven't even fully recovered. Like this isn't good, but the routine I'm on right now, and like when I did full body and upper body, lower body push pull legs, I was able to recover perfectly fine, just because it was a good routine. Like I think, I think the bro um, style of training just sucks. Honestly, it's just it's terrible. Unless you're like a super genetic freak and you recover, you know for sure your recovery is good and whatnot. Your diet's on check and whatever, then you could probably do well with it. But in terms of how they got jacked back then. Volume and frequency, three times per week, a good amount of volume, good amount of training, I mean, good amount of diet, rest, they got through it. And they did, you know, they had optimal rest periods. You know, they train three days out of the week and rest four days out of the week. So it's like, they're making the most gains while they're resting. On top of that, they're, like, I, I don't know how many times I have to repeat it. You know, sleep, diet, tr um, all of it's all in check. Make sure it was maximized. And that's how they got really jacked. A lot of people keep wondering, how did they get so jacked? How did they do it? We were taking steroids. They were not taking steroids. They had every. They lived a lifestyle towards being healthy and looking good. All right. More of it was for the health, right? So they ate. Let me redo a quick recap. They did basic exercises, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking bench press, squat, pressing, EMG dominant exercises that stimulate and fatigue the most muscle fibers in that muscle. All right. None of that machine. Um, BS, you know that's that shit. That shit just doesn't work. All right, you're not gonna get as much um, work done compared to a compound exercise. A compound exercise. All right. Now they ate a lot of food, a lot of food, ladies and gentlemen. This is how they were to push them th push themselves through a really hard long workout, and this is exactly how they recover from a long hard workout. All right. I'm thinking forty five um, thousand calories in them, and we're talking about a well rounded diet full of meat, dairy, fruits, vegetables, grains, all of it, all right? None of that super bro diet stuff where it's like chicken, rice, eggs, egg whites, none of that stuff. It was well-rounded, all right? All right, well, lots of calories um, aided in the recovery. And they and then they slept a lot, eight to 10 hours, all right? Steve Reeves talked about how he slept eight to 10 hours. They didn't have any cell phones, you know, nothing kept them up at night. They just slept, kicked back. Um, and lastly, they had a good routine. None of that bro split stuff. 
They had a routine that was good in frequency, three times per week. And in terms of volume, about 25, no, maybe even more, 25 to 30 sets per week, even more than that, to be honest. More than 25 to 30 sets per week. And this was the foundation of what made a really good bodybuilder back then. And this is still what will make you a really good bodybuilder today if you just have all these things in check. Like, it's not that difficult. Like, this is just natural bodybuilding at its finest, to be honest. Like, you think of a steroid, a guy who uses gear, he can get away with, um, he can get away with doing um, machines, he can get away with, um, like, even having a shitty diet just because of the Tran, the clan, the Anavar, the, the, all this stuff. It, it, it helps him recover fast. It helps them get stay shredded. Like you guys, you guys see, you guys see like guys like John Skywalker who eat like shit. He smokes, um, but he's still shredded because of the gear. All right, they get away with lots of sleep. Like like some of these guys don't even like they party all the time. It's like do you guys do you even sleep? No, that they they will get away with that recovery just because of the gear. All right, and again, a lot of the guys on gear they always do the bro split chest day back day arm day shoulder day like they get away with that just because the, the gear is what helps the recovery like that's how they're able to get away with a lot of that stuff this is stuff they put this this is how this is the stuff that silver era bodybuilders put into practice that made them incredible bodybuilders like it's not that difficult like you just got to eat a lot of food do basic exercises compounds foundation exercises um, get lots of sleep and have a good routine. That's all it is. It's not that hard. It's not steroids. Like if you look at their physiques, guys like I think guys like if you look at guys like Alan Stefan, John Farbonic, those guys look plain and simple natural bodybuilders. Like they look natural. Like sort of like I'm not saying average, but they look like definitely achievable. Like it's like that's something you shouldn't even question. Like oh, was Alan Stefan or John Farbonic natural? Of course, those guys. Now, a lot of people question guys like Reg Park and Steve Reeves just because they had pretty good genetics, but you got to believe that some people just have great genetics nowadays. Like, some people are just naturally big. I see it all the time. All right, cool. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. The last thing I want to say before I end it is I did come out with a free ebook. If you're struggling with dieting, if, you have, if you're struggling with gaining weight, losing weight, um, you lack basic knowledge and nutrition, um, you want a little more guidance, you gain weight but then you end up losing the weight when you want, you're trying to keep it on or when you lose weight and you gain it back and you're just trying to keep the weight off this book is for you if you put these five guidelines into practice i promise you you will make incredible progress in the next few weeks incredible this, this is going to give you structure this is going to give you that support that you really need that sort of clarity on how to approach dieting and what you should be doing. Because a lot of people have questions like, hey, why, I'm, I'm doing calories, um, why isn't it working? I'm eating a lot of calories, why aren't I gaining? Um, they think, oh, like, what do you think of keto? And I'm like, dude, just read my ebook. I'm it's give, I'm putting it out there for free. Like, I've, I spent a lot of time on, on the phone with you guys. Like, you guys, we scheduled like free calls and we talked about what the struggles were and this is what I came up with. I looked at all my notes all my notes and I tried to fill in all the blanks that you guys had and I put it into this little ebook like it's literally four or five pages long but it's going to give you lots and lots of value and clarity on how to approach dieting and to ditch bro dieting forever all right this is going to be the super simple way to maintaining all the gains that you make whether it's losing weight gaining weight and whatnot but go ahead and shoot me an email at oldschoolphysiquesteam at gmail.com I'll put it in the description for you guys to sort of just take um, email me. Um, this is how I send it. I've been sending a lot of emails um, in the past day or two. I've probably sl sent more than maybe like 50 emails in the last day. Um, been pretty crazy. It's my, my inbox is still being blown up. I'm just trying to get to everybody. But yeah, if you have any questions about that, please leave a quick comment below. If you have any questions about the um, presentation I just gave, go ahead and leave a comment. Lastly, before you guys leave, um, nah, never mind. With that being said, subscribe for more videos like this. Give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. I'm Mosco Dan. I'm gone. Peace.